appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a tour of the scamp. So we'll go ahead and I'll flip the camera around so you can kind of get a good look, starting with the uh, outside of the camper. As you can see, uh, it's a really well kept up shell. I try to clean it regularly, uh, make sure no mildew or anything builds up on it. Um, this is the back that uh, we named it Poco Loco back there. Of course, this is a decal. It can uh, easily come off and these decals on these windows can peel off as well. Um, that is the uh, little tire cover that I got. That was a little add on and that can be replaced if you'd like something different to go there. Um, as for the outside, we'll just kind of take a walk through around the whole thing. What you're looking at right here is you have the um, plug right underneath the word scamp here. This is just a little outlet should you want to plug in something on the outside. You've got your hot water heater here um, on the inside. This is your drain plug for the hot water heater. So if you need to kind of empty it out, I like to not keep it really full if I'm not going to be using it for a while. So I just drain it completely, kind of let it breathe a little bit. Um, it is an electric and a gas hot water heater. Um, about last November, I did have um, the gas checked out on this and the wiring redone just to make sure we were good to go on the gas side of the hot water heater. But I rarely use the gas side. Usually if I do use it, I'm plugged in somewhere and I just uh, flip that switch on the electrical side. So that is that. This is the inside portion for your refrigeration unit. Um, I've never really had to access this at all, but that is how you would access the backside of your refrigerator should you need to. You've got yourself a little uh, light switch right out here. I've replaced all the light bulbs so they are LED uh, throughout the inside uh, and outside of the camper, especially all the 12 volt ones. Um, looking right now, let me back up a little bit here for you. You've got the um, overhead part here where you see the uh, bedroom, if you will, the little loft bed. Um, that is where that sits on the outside. And you have your little step down there on your door uh, on the front side. You've got your two propane tanks. One and two, you've got a little uh, valve here that shows you how you're doing. And you can flip back and forth between each by flipping this little switch right here. Um, I don't have the battery in it right now, but I can show you that a little bit later. I like keep the battery on a, a trickle charger, a little like 12 stage charger when I'm not using it. Um, here we are on the front side of the camper, so you can kind of get a good look at the shell. It's a little sunny out here, but get a good feel for what that looks like. This here is the crank to actually lift and lower the front of the camper. So this is how you're gonna lift it up when you need to line it up with the hitch. Um, and then of course this handle slides right out and you just put it in the back of your truck when you're moving around. Um, I do keep a, a lock, which is, this will come with it as well. But I do keep the hitch locked at all times and I have the keys for that. Over on this side, um, it used to have a gas heater from a previous owner, but they took that out. Um, so the vents are still here and you could install another one if you wanted to. We have always just used an electric space heater um, or you could use like one of those Mr. Buddy propane heaters, which are safe for indoors. Um, if you like to stick with the gas or you plan on boondocking at all, but these have actually been filled with a uh, styrofoam insert that can slide in and out uh, to keep any critters or any type of heat or cold sneaking in and out of the camper. Uh, on this side, you have your uh, water. This is where you'd bring the water into the camper. Um, so it would come in if you were like on city water here. And then you have your power cord, which right now is running off of just a regular wall outlet. I have a little adapter for that, which would come with it as well. Um, that's what I do when I'm at home, but usually you're running off a 30 amp power. Uh, and then you have this little input coax cable here. This is if you want to tap into like a campgrounds uh, cable connection. So you can get a good look at the camper from here. And I may go to the wide lens here for a second if we can. No, I'm not sure I can right now. I can't switch while recording a video, but I'll step back a little bit. So you can get a good look. On top of the camper there, you're seeing the air conditioning unit dead center. Uh, just behind that is a little window or a vent rather. It's not really a window. It's more of a, a rooftop part that cranks up. It serves as a way to let air in through the roof. Um, and it also acts as an emergency hatch. There's one of those on the front above the bed as well. And then you have the um, over the air antenna on top, just a little bit behind the air conditioning unit there. On the backside, you've got your jacks. 
Um, looks like these are more of a stabilizing jack here. So this is really from right to left. You aren't necessarily lifting your tires off the ground with these. These are just meant to keep the camper from rocking back and forth. Um, right next to that on the back end here, this is your gray water tank, your wastewater holding tank. Um, this is where all like your wastewater from your shower or even your sink will go to. And this is your dirtier water, your black tank right here, your sewage holding tank. Um, and then I have a 15 foot hose that I keep along with it. All right, let's go around. We'll check out the interior. It does have a screen door here. Keep it strapped up when you're moving, but that's how the screen door works on the camper. So this door here actually locks open if you want. All right, apologies, somebody called me while I was trying to show you how the door locks open, so I'll just piece this together. This is how the door locks open right here, um, or locks. So you just swing it open like so. You can get a good look at the door with it shut. All right, let's go in. As you walk in, you have your bathroom door right in front of us. We installed little hooks. We like to have hooks around, just jackets or, or hats or whatever. Um, so we use a lot of command um, strips as well, where you just kind of stick these on so you can hook keys or, or different things, keep them from laying around on the ground. We try to run a tight ship when we're all in here. Um, so what you're looking at right now is towards the front of the camper and you have the full, I guess it's a queen size bed. Um, I don't know if you call it a camper queen or what, but it's a good size bed. My wife and I sleep up there and we've even had our five-year-old up there with us at the same time. But then you have this bench here that this converts into a bunk. This folds up like so. That folds down and there's some bars that hold this top part up in place. I actually have some cushions as well if you want to make it a more substantial bed. It's just not as mobile and versatile um, if you're going to do that, but um, I'd be happy to give you those as well. They're kind of like cut mattress pads that I put on top of these, and it just makes a more comfortable uh, sleeping environment. So sometimes, usually, I'll travel. If I'm traveling with kids, I'll just put the bunks up, and then I'll lay down those pads to make them a little bit of a softer sleeping space there. Um, this is a nice little spot. I often like put my computer up here, but you can put, you know, anything you want on top of that little shelf there. It's really durable. You don't want to travel with anything not locked down, but when you're parked, that's a good spot. Uh, and then you have this as a hanger here. You've got a little wall plug right here. Um, and just keep a couple extra hooks around like for my flashlight right there. Um, up in the bed section, we'll climb up here. So in the bed, we put these two little command strip shelves on each side. We like to put our glasses or, you know, whatever we need, maybe a, a watch or something that you don't want to sleep with, but you want to keep near the bed. You can set it up there. By the bed, you have these lights, which these are the um, lights. They work, of course, offshore power, but also if you were just boondocking, these lights would work off the battery alone, which is nice. I guess you call them the, your 12 volt lights and this one as well can work off the battery alone. So that's what you'd have. I mentioned that door that cranks up on the roof. Here's the one above the bed. So it's actually an emergency hatch as well, but it lets air in. All right. We installed a curtain. Should like you have other people in here and you just want to like change or something up in this bed section, you can let that down and just kind of slide it across for a little extra privacy. Here's the refrigerator. Let me start far, further back. So I turned it off last night. I turned it on to show the last people who looked at it, um, but it has been off for a little while. But here is your fuel selector and it's gas or electric. You got your thermostat here and you use these when lighting it for gas, but not electric. Electric, you're just turning the switch and it turns on. And you have a little freezer door here as well. And stuff does stay frozen in there. Tested it this past weekend. Up here is, this is the manual, but this is actually where a microwave was when we first got it. And we still have the microwave and happy to give that to you as well. If you purchase the camper, 
um, but we use it as a pantry storage. And we actually have two baskets that we keep in here and we keep a lot of canned goods and breads and chips and stuff like that. We found that most useful. We don't really use a microwave when we're camping. Up top, we're above the sink right now. We keep plates and store sometimes a little extra food. You got your fire extinguisher. This is a toothbrush holder, which is nice and convenient. Keeps your toothbrushes off the countertop. Here's another 12 volt light, should you need it. But you also have these lights. Now these lights only work when you're plugged into shore power. So these are a little brighter, a little bit more powerful. Um, I put a little hook here for a brush to wash dishes. You got your dish soap, hand soap. There's a little plug right here on the back side of the sink. Now this is your water pump, only needed when you're pumping fresh water out of the tank, which is underneath this bench right here. It's a 12 gallon fresh water tank. Um, and it can of course send water to the sink and into the bathroom as well. And this is your gas hot water uh, heater switch. I just put this cover over it to keep my little girl from accidentally bumping it when we don't want to. If you want to turn on the electric hot water heater, that will come under here, there's a little on off switch right there and that's your electric water heater and you can see it's insulated as well. Um, I've replaced the, you probably can't see that, but I've replaced the traps on both the sink and the shower. So plumbing's in good shape. All right, let's turn around. You're looking at the back side of the camper now. So here's your table with cushions as the benches. This table can fold up. It's got these little brackets on the back. It folds up, leg kicks under, and then the table lowers down and sits on this lip on both sides. Uh, and then these cushions slide over into like a four-way configuration that acts as another bed. On a smaller scamp of 13 or 16, this is the primary bed back here that also serves as the table. More cabinets. Well, you have the two cabinets above the bed space here. We use these for clothing a lot. We just kind of shove a lot of clothes up here, especially on a short trip, it's really convenient. And you've got storage above the sink. Extra 12 volt light here. And let's take a quick look at the stove situation. I'm gonna set this down for a second. All right, so here's your stove. If I wanted to light one, put it in light mode. There you go. There's your flame. I'd actually already drained all the air out of the lines um, just so it lit pretty quickly there. Uh, and then all three burners work. I have a cat in here. If you hear some sounds, she just walked in. Um, and here's your oven. It's gas as well, and you light up down below. You light the pilot light and then light up the gas. It heats very well. Uh, we have roasted vegetables in it. We keep this on top of the stove, and it also acts as like a cutting board as well if you want to use that. And this little cutting board can come out if you need to clean it. Um, let's see. Over here, put some more hooks just for spatulas and other kitchen devices. Uh, this is a command strip paper towel holder. I don't travel with this because it can pop out, but while we're parked, it works perfectly. And then I just pop out this metal bar and the paper towels and I put it underneath the cabinet when I'm moving. Uh, and again, this is another one of those lights that will not work off battery. It will only work when you're plugged in. And this is the last non LED light. It's a fluorescent bulb. I think I actually put an LED bulb. There's my cat who just climbed up in here. Um, and more storage right underneath the front. This is a good spot to like keep stuff that you need when you're setting up camp. Uh, so I keep a lot of little like things that maybe like screwdrivers. Uh, I actually have a little compact TV in here for the over the air antenna if I need it. Um, I keep this, which does my reverse uh, stabilizers, the ones on the back side. Um, it's just nice and convenient. I keep rubber gloves up here. So if I'm working with a septic unit, um, that's where I would take that on. Let's take a quick look at the bathroom. So, here is your shower hose. And these are just little covers that are on the knobs. They come right off. Got your toilet. I don't have water on here, but you can flush that. Got your shower pan. Um, and this is actually a pump 
that will pump out the shower pan. The, all scamps have it. Basically, if you start to have water build up down here, you kick on that pump and it helps suck all that water over to the, the gray tank. Um, you've got a little window that cranks out for ventilation in here. There's no fan, so to speak, in the bathroom, but this does act as ventilation in the bathroom. Let's talk about the air conditioner real quick. Now, I'm not on 30 amp power, so I bring it up slowly. Right now you're just in fan mode. You'll hear the compressor kick on in a second when I flip to actual cool mode. There it is, you hear that? And it starts to blow cold air. Now, technically, you'll notice that you have a thermostat here. It doesn't really warm things up, it just cools things down. It says, when you turn it to the warm, it says it takes the chill out of the air. I don't really mess with it. If I need to heat up, if I'm camping somewhere cold, we use a very small electrical space heater that has an automatic you know, tip off type shut off. Uh, on it and let's take a quick look back here pull these cushions down forgive me because i only have one hand so here you have more storage it's a good place to keep like your water hose um, for city water and then that's actually the power cord uh, that runs for the whole entire unit and then on the other side Take a quick look over here. This is your fresh water tank. I actually sanitized it last weekend, but feel free to sanitize it again if you need. You can look on YouTube on how to do that. I keep a little mechanical vacuum cleaner in here. And I think that is the grand tour so hopefully this gives you a little bit of a better idea of the camper i don't know if i actually showed you this window here was that other roof vent cranks up just fine and let me know if i missed anything again wanted to do this just to kind of give you guys a little bit more confidence with uh, what you're trying to buy remotely. And if uh, you have any questions, just let me know. Oh wait, let me show you that battery real quick. Here we are. So this is an AGM battery. I bought this. This is like a $350 battery. It's nice. It's um, a VMAX and I keep it on a trickle charger at all times so uh it's ready to go no need to replace a battery and it's not lead acid it's not water in the battery so you don't have to worry about that spilling out or anything like that all right guys thank you